Hey, what's going on guys? Let's try this problem right here. Here what we are trying to do is we are going to find out this mesh currents and branch currents using mesh analysis method. Now in order to do mesh analysis method, we have to follow all these steps. Now the first step is assign currents for each branch. Now if you notice we don't have current in any branch. So let's put current for every branch. So this is going to act as a branch, right? So here we have plus right here. So let's assume this is going from plus, right? So this is I1 and we have to have an I2. Let's assume this one going from plus. So I2 and then we have I3. So it doesn't matter if you chose it wrong because you will get a negative answer. Negative represents it's in the opposite direction, right? So you will always get the right answer. So it's, it doesn't matter which direction you choose for current. Now let's look, look at the next part. Next part is saying assign the mesh currents for each mesh. So mesh current is basically this middle part. So here what we do is let's assume this. Let's, uh, let's put I1 right here and let's put I2. So these are the two meshes we have. So we assign currents for each. Now the third thing is apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law to obtain equations. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law is but voltage law says that summation of the voltage in each loop or each mesh is going to be zero. Now let's take mesh one and summation of voltage must be zero. So from this one we can create equations. Now let's see what we get. So first of all, I1 is flowing through this one, right? So here we have minus plus. So if the current goes from minus to plus, it's going to be positive. So here we put positive 50, right? And if it moves along this path, along this line, this is going to be negative. So this is going to be negative. And we know that V, v is equal to IR, right? So this is going to be 2I1. And when it's go through middle, it's going along the path. So this is going to be minus 12 I1. But there's also I2 is coming this way. So coming uh, I2 is going against this direction. So if it goes against this direction, that's going to be positive. So in order to get positive, since we have 12 I1 right here, this is going to be 12 I2. So this is, we already have minus. So this is minus 12. And to get positive, we have to put a minus. So 12 I2, that's going to make this one positive, right? And finally, we have a 4. And that's going to be negative. 4 I1. So if you don't have any voltage source, and if you only have the ohm, you can put negative. Because you always assume it's go along the path. So it's going to be negative. That's why I put negative 2 I1 negative 4 I1 so th this thing are uh, easy to put right now let's look at the mesh 2 mesh 2 again uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law summation of voltage must be 0 now let's begin with here right again so this is going so in this in this case 12 is uh, I2 is going along this one so we had to have a negative so let's put a negative. It's better to start with 18 voltage because if we add them, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's put. Let's start with this one. So if it's going along this one, that's going to be negative. Negative 12 I1 I2 actually, 12 I2, and then this I1 is coming against it, so it it should be positive so this is going to be negative 12 i1 so that will make this one positive right negative negative that will make this one positive 12 i1 and here this is going along this path this 9 ohm along this 9 ohm that's going to make this one negative 9 i2 and then you shouldn't worry about this current this doesn't change anything we are going to finally find this current so we only look at this one, this one going along this one, that's why it's negative. And then it's going from plus to minus. And before we saw that if it's going from minus to plus, 
is a positive if it's going from plus to minus it's going to be negative negative 18 and again this is going to be just minus 3 i2 right now this is our two equations now let's simplify so first we have 50 and uh, let's add them together so here we have negative 2 i1 and negative 12 i1 that's going to be negative 14 i1 and minus 4 4 i1 that's going to make this one negative 18 i1 right and let's add the i2s together so we only have this i2 and that is going to be positive right because minus minus that's going to make this one positive so here we're going to have 12 plus 12 i2 and if i move this 15 other side of the equation that's going to be minus 15 and this is our first equation and let's add the second equation so let's add the i1s first first we have negative 12 i1 and here we have a negative that's going to make this one positive right so this is going to be positive 12 i1 and then negative 12 i2 minus 9 i2 that's going to make this one negative 21 i2 negative 21 minus 3 i2 that's going to make this one negative 24 i2 and then we have this number 18 and if i move this one other side of the equation that's going to make this one 18 now if you notice here we have 12 i2 here we have minus 24 i2 so in order to solve this one easily what we can do is we can multiply this equation by 2 so if we multiply this is going to become 24 and when we add them together this 24 this 24 cancels and then we can solve for this i1 right now if you multiply this one by 2 that's going to make this one minus 36 i1 and this is going to become plus 24 i2 and this is going to be negative 30 right and let's add them together so here we are going to have negative 24 i1 right and this is going to be just 0 equal to 18 minus 30 18 minus 30 is going to be minus 12 right so minus 12 and 24 i1 is equal to minus 12 therefore i1 is going to be equal to minus 12 over minus 24 therefore i1 is equal to 0 0.5 ampere right so now we have i1 now to find i2 what we can do is we can take one of this equation so let's take this one this first equation so that is uh, 12 i2 is equal to if i move this negative 18 i1 to other side that's going to make this one positive 18 i1 minus 15 right now let's plug this 0 0.5 18 times 0 0.5 minus 15 and uh, this is equal to 12 i2 now if you want to find i2 we have to divide this one by 12 right so 18 times 0.5 that's going to be 9 9 minus 15 is going to be minus 6 right minus 6 over 12 here we are going to have negative 0 0.5 ampere now i2 is negative 0 0.5 i1 is 0 0.5 ampere now we have found out our mesh currents now if you want to find this branch currents again that's easy like since this is along this current this is going to be whatever the value it is like i1 is the only one going this way right so since we know i1 is 0 0.5 ampere this small i1 also going to be 0 0.5 ampere and let's see what we get for i2 and i2 we assume this direction and this mesh current is going this direction so this is opposite right so we have to put a minus and the answer we got i2 for i2 is negative 0 0.5 ampere right so negative negative make this one plus so again i2 is going to be 0 0.5 ampere now let's look at this one so i3 i3 is equal to so we know that i1 is going along i3 so that's going to be positive i1 and i2 is going against i3 so that's going to be negative i2 like it's capital right capital i1 and going against so capital i2 negative right going against so negative i2 and this is going to be 
positive I1 is 0 0.5 ampere minus and this is negative 0 0.5 I2 is negative 0 0.5 so negative negative 0 0.5 right here here we have minus minus 0 0.5 ampere and that's going to make this one 1 because minus minus that's going to be plus so we are going to have 1 ampere for I3 now we have all the branch currents and we have the mesh currents and that's how we do this kind of problems right I hope you guys find this video helpful see you next time